Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is the Shadowed Viper. Today we are taking a look at the ACE-23 Assault Rifle. Also known as the gun you love killing people with, but the gun you hate getting killed with. So let's get straight into this weapon review. The maximum damage is at 25 and the minimum damage is at 18. This is pretty much your standard assault rifle damage statistics. The drop-off start of a bullet is at 8 meters, and the drop-off end of a bullet is at 55 meters. Like I said, this weapon is actually really good, but the stats we've read so far are very basic. They are your general assault rifle statistics. The fire rate is at 770 rounds per minute. That's actually very impressive. Comparing to a lot of other assault rifles like the SAR-21 or the M416, this gun performs really well with fire rate. The muzzle velocity is at 620 meters per second. So what we've read so far is that this weapon is a jack of all trades. I mean, it's a great weapon to use and it really is great to kill with, but like I said, you hate getting killed by this weapon, don't you? Yeah, I do myself, but when you use it, you will absolutely kick ass in Battlefield 4. The reload times when there are no bullets left is at 3.1 seconds and the reload times when there are some bullets left it is at 2.1 seconds. That's also pretty damn standard but I would say that if you're like a heavy heavy aggressive person I would really recommend the AEK-91 instead of the ACE-23. But if you're good at medium to long range and even short range for god's sakes you will do great with this gun. It is a great weapon to use and it is basically a jack of all trades. So what we've read so far is that the stats are very basic and there's nothing really impressive about this gun except the recoil statistics, which I'm going to get into in a second. When I saw that the ACE-23 had a 770 round per minute rate of fire, I was actually really damn impressed with the recoil statistics. If you look at a gun like the AEK-971, it has like 800 round per minute rate of fire. And that actually is pretty damn high, and it's not. And the ACE-23 is not that far off from that. The AEK-971 has extreme recoil, whereas the ACE-23 has very impressive recoil statistics. I'm gonna get into what attachments you should use a little bit later, but let's read out the, the statistics right now. The recoil going upwards is at 0 0.36, towards the left is at 0 0.15, and towards the right is at 0 0.25. Now, let me tell you something, that is very impressive. The AEK-971 has a much higher recoil, and the rate of fire is not far off from the ACE-23. And usually a gun with such a high rate of fire normally has quite a lot of recoil, but this gun, let's face it, the gun is very damn overpowered. Come on, DICE, you need to patch this. I love the gun so much, but it is really damn overpowered, and I definitely think that a patch for this gun would be extremely good. So let's get on to some of the attachments I always recommend you use. Now, to be honest, I don't really recommend you use any attachments, well, for heavy barrel, compensator, flash hider type of things. I usually recommend the Coyote sight and the, or the Cobra sight, but this time, if you want to mix it up a little bit, I think you should go with the Holographic sight. Now, that might seem, that may seem a little bit weird, because the Holographic sight isn't very well used, especially with the assault rifles. I like to think of the attachments like a loadout themselves, and if you have the attachments as a loadout, you might just make your gun kick ass, you never really know. So if you use the Holographic sight, I always recommend the Suppressor. Well, the Suppressor, if you're playing Domination, it really depends what game mode you're playing, because if you have a Suppressor, and you're like like with 10 teammates on the map and they're all firing and they don't have suppressors then there's no there's not really much of a point because you're still going to show up on the radar anyway so if you're like a lone wolf going for the sneaky attack i would always recommend a suppressor and maybe a holographic sight as it gives you a sort of a clear picture but if you're really aggressive i recommend the coyote sight or the cobra sight now those two ha are my personal favorite attachments and from battlefield 3 the cobra sight as well was one of my favorite attachments i like the coyote sight as well just because of the way it looks i like the red dot in the middle i feel like that coyote sight really is a great attachment and the cobra sight has always been a fan favorite but like i said if you think of your attachments as a loadout then why not make it a loadout i mean i've done that so many times like with my battlefield 4 loadout videos i would put the holographic sight on one gun and maybe a heavy barrel on the gun or whatever so when you go for the barrels, heavy barrel, suppressor, compensator, etc. If you're using the holographic sight and you're going for a sneaky attack, suppressor, holographic sight, boom, you're done. But if you're just going for a standard attack, like if you're playing rush and you're not flanking, you're just chilling with the team, I would always recommend the cobra sight 
the coyote sight, and possibly a heavy barrel. Now, heavy barrels work really well on assault rifles compared to what they used to in Battlefield 3. I think that the heavy barrels do a great job, especially with the guns that have sort of weird stability and weird recoil, although I say that, but you don't really need to, need to attach a compensator to this weapon because the recoil is freaking impressive. I don't think you'll be need to deal with recoil in this gun, and if you do, then damn, you suck at Battlefield 4. <laughs> I'm just joking. Not everyone is at a level of me. I'm, I'm bragging. Not everyone is a level of level cap, for an example. Level of level cap. I see what you did there. Not that many people can handle recoil, and this is kind of a start off gun, even though you unlock this at the end. I don't think that made any sense, but you get the message. If you're not good with recoil, then this gun is definitely for you. If you are good with recoil, then you don't really need to attach a compensator, and I would always recommend going for another gun, as it is much of a challenge. I would give this gun an easy 9 out of 10, and it's pretty much the best assault rifle in Battlefield 4. I think it has got extremely good rate of fire, great recoil statistics, it's not too big on your screen, and it's overall a really nice gun to use, especially if you want to customize it to your liking, you know, adding in Cobra sights, holographic sights, suppressors, etc. I think that this gun only missed a point because it's damn overpowered. It probably doesn't make any sense, but I like to have a challenge with a gun. I don't want it to be too good, I don't want it to be too bad, I want it to be in the middle, and if it is too bad, hell, I might just try it out as well. This is the best pro assault rifle in my opinion, and if you don't like assault rifles and you unlocked all of them, or you bought them, it's really up to you, then this is probably the gun for you. I highly recommend it, and I would easily give it a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching guys, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and a comment down below, share it with your friends on social media and basically anyone who you think would enjoy it, follow me on Twitter and follow me on Facebook to get extremely good latest updates, and be sure to check the description or you can type it out manually, now it should display on the screen. This is a link that will take you to a website called g2a.com, it's basically a website that sells games like any other website, except they are relatively cheaper, you're looking at maybe 20-30% to 30 cheaper depending on the game. It's a great deal and I think you would all benefit from it as well as me. Thank you for watching guys, and I will see you in the next one.